Welcome, regular and new listeners alike, to the official Leeds United podcast with me, Matthew Lewis, and Jermaine Beckford. Um, hey. Unfortunately, Emma can't be with us this week, but we are joined by the prodigal, elusive son himself, <laughs> Patrick Bamford. All right, Pat, how's it going? Hi, guys. It's oh, about right. time. Oh, yeah. Where, it's been a while. It's been where a while. have you been? Do you know what? I decided to come back because ever since I came off it, I've, uh, I've just been injured. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. What are you both thinking? How are you both feeling about, about Southampton? Um, I mean, it says here, I've got right in here, so I've got a question. Point one or two lost? I, I already know the answer to that. It was two lost, but just talk to me. What, how, what are you both, your, your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I think it's definitely two points lost, but um, I also don't think we played quite as well as we did against Wolves, especially Wolves first half. Um, but then you have to take into consideration how hot it was. Like it was, it was difficult. Like the conditions. I know it sounds easy to kind of blame that, but it was difficult to keep it up for the whole game. And um, look, the lads were gutted in the change room after because there was no way that we should have, like we should have battered them. Really, it should have been more than two nil. And end up drawing the game to all. So, all leads, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. Obviously, I've been to a fair few teams, so I know what it's like when you <laughs> for the first couple of weeks when you join. But like this changing room, everyone's kind of easy going and welcomes everyone. And this time around, like with all the players that have, that have joined, the fact that we went on tour to Australia for two weeks, I think that helped because we're together like every day, every minute, pretty much. And um, so, yeah, they settled in really easy. And obviously, Brendan, Ty and Rasmus, they all knew each other kind of anyway uh, before, which also kind of gave them a buddy as soon as they joined. But yeah, they've been great and um, they've settled in. Jesse's kind of made sure that the group, a big thing with how he works is kind of putting the team, like the team unity before anything. Like There has to be a good feel amongst the team and all that. And I think that that kind of, I know you said, Bex, about like, be happy with the four points of the two games I felt like this season has been like a little bit of a change in kind of mentality here in the rather than like looking at it thinking how we were last year maybe that would take a point and all that like we went into the game we expected to win like maybe it's a little bit naive after how last year went but it just shows kind of the, the kind of step forward that we wanted to take and then obviously the way the game went, I was unfortunate and things like that. But yeah, I think that that's probably down to the new players. It's like a, it's kind of like a fresh start, isn't it? When you have players that didn't have like the debris of last year kind of lingering. I was talking last week about, um, and again, I don't know the lads. I don't know um, Aronson or uh, or Adams, but I was just talking about. Um, how there's real American young young athletes in America. They just they have this winning mentality. Like there's no kind of they they. I mean they probably do, but outwardly they don't ever seem to show any kind of. Um, uh, they 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 Fear. believe that they yeah exactly they mm. believe they're going to win wherever they go no matter what they they're not overawed by any sense of it. Do you feel that with these lads coming in like they're here to win games? Yeah, I'm. I'm going to be honest when. Friend, um, when I saw him doing his medical, I thought I was like a bit unsure. I thought I look, he looks like a little boy. So <laughs> right. he's, thinking, like, yeah. he's small, he's like a stick. But then when you see him in training, he is like non stop running. And the yeah. amount of balls he wins back, he's aggressive mm. for his size. And so I, I was like really impressed by him. Have you played against him in training? Are they really irritating to play against? They just seem to be so. I, I, I could picture um, Aronson being so frustrating, <laughs> yeah. so frustrating. Like you, you chop, you change direction, and before you, before you've got another chance to like burst two or three yards, he's there again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fortunately, I haven't had to like kind of play against him because he's up against the defenders. Um, but he, so Ty is irritating because <laughs> like, he just appears out of nowhere and he is full throttle. There was one time a few weeks ago. Where literally I chested the ball down, we were playing some kind of attacking transition. And I'd lost, I think it had gone over Rasmus's head. And I was just about to shoot. And Ty, like, he had no business being there. And he just sort of <laughs> sort of slid from like 10 meters away. He's just full throttle. But they're, they're good lads, really good lads. Listening on together. But you've talked about the season and that you think that there's a real, uh, you know, a clean slate and, and, um, 
and there's a winning mentality that, that, that maybe we a shifting mentality, yeah, yeah, that we were kind of struggling to find at the back end of last season. And you, you alluded to the disappointment in the dressing room after getting a point away from home, which you know a lot of clubs that's 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 all they ever want to do. Um, so yeah, this season, Jesse, what's uh, what's the gauntlet that's been laid down for you? Like, what are we what are we hoping for? Um, he hasn't. We haven't really set down like a league position that we want to aim for. Um, we kind of take the games in bunches and give ourselves like a target for, say, a group of so many games of what we want to achieve in, in that time. Um, but I think the general feeling is like pushing it. We want to go as far as we can. Like, obviously, for me, I was saying we need to be thinking about Europe. Like, it sounds daft, but that's kind of what I'm thinking I want to play in Europe. So we as a team should be thinking about trying to get there. And it, it does seem like a big gap from where we finished last year to there. But I think if we're aiming that way, then you kind of start like growing that mentality naturally between the team, like the fact that we are, are gutted that we only got a point in the weekend. And then eventually like, that kind of turns into something that it keeps the standards high and you know what you're aiming for, even if it seems far at the start. I think that it gives you a better chance of getting there. Uh, Bex, what, what's what's your hope for the season? Your uh, outside of the outside of the playing personnel where they have to be diplomatic. What's you? What do you what do you want from from the year? Um, this season, I want to be able to enjoy every single game. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> hey, you literally already- just said. Shoot for the stars. That's what you just said. I'm yeah, shooting for already, the stars, man. <laughs> we've already failed after that second half. We've already, that's it. That's, we've already failed. Well, look, most importantly for me, I think it's it's picking up a certain amount of points to make sure we avoid relegation by about January. And then we're able to, to push on towards the, the areas that Pat's talking about there. The, the European spots um, would be amazing. As on tour again, mate, come on. That would be un- unreal. Unreal. Um, it's all about steps though, isn't it? It's all steps on a ladder. It's game by game, you know, standard old cliches, not looking too far in, in advance. And uh, Pat touched on it there, looking at the season in, in small clusters of games. And once you're able to do that and pick up a certain amount of points within that cluster of games, um, hopefully by uh, February, March sort of times, we'd have enough on the board to, to give us that added boost and that added push to, to propel us towards the, those European spots where um, I think we'll, we'll do wonders. All Leeds, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. What was the crowd like, Pat? I mean, first game, it looks yeah, it looks electric. Yeah, you know what it's like when, um, well, I suppose Bex knows what it's like when you walk out in front of them. But thanks. I, yeah, sorry, <laughs> oh, Matty wouldn't I know that. Oh, sorry, Matty. I did Matty. it once in a charity match. Right. Get him one back, Pat. Get him back, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> No, they're fantastic, obviously. The, the noise levels are crazy. And you don't actually, sometimes on the pitch, you don't really take as much notice because you're kind of in the heat of the moment with the game going all around you. But then when you speak to your family and stuff after and ask them, like, how loud was it? Then you kind of realise... Yeah, it's nice to be back. Listening on together. Um, well, since you've pointed out that uh, I am not and have never been a professional footballer, um, I'm going to pit. I'm going to pit. Uh, I'm going to pit you two against each other. Uh, we read in an interview um, you did with the Athletic uh, where you said that uh, you've been the top ten in the Premier League for sprint, sprint speeds. Pat, uh, is that true? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, no, I think so. Very, very modest. Um, do you reckon? Uh, do you reckon you're quicker than Bex ever was? Over what distance? Hundred meters. <laughs> Hundred meters. <laughs> when I mean, no that's a silly question. Meters in a, in no, a game. we're strikers, well, mate. That well, doesn't happen. Maybe you should. Maybe we'd win more. No. Okay. Let's say what? Like tw- over twenty meters. Well, then twenty meters. You and Bex. I'm gonna say. Bex probably. What do you think? Twenty meters, Bex. I don't know about. I I'm, reckon forty meters. I'd have, but I, I I'm reckon gonna be honest, Pat I don't remember how quick you were. I, I was rapid, bro. <laughs> 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 um, like, I remember I was some all of about, the goals. Yeah, I'm. I'm about. I'm. I was about sharpness. So those fifteen, twenty meters, I was. I was sharp off the mark. And then it was twenty to forty meters. I reckon you've got me on that. 
I really did do. You, did you have these um, kind of top ten? Did they, did they were they calculating all that stuff? Like, did you have a top ten? Yeah, I didn't. Sprints? I didn't pay much attention to it. It gets boring when you're at the top all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they never used to report it on teletext. Uh, <laughs> Pat, what happened to the union, man? The strikers' union, bro. I said, I put you over 20, you got me on 40. Matty started it by sending (laughs) shots my way. (laughs) Brutal (laughs) shots being fired all over. Headless, man. This is the official Leeds United podcast.